Hello, it's Scott Manley here. In my quest to build unmanned rockets, I did manage to get a massive monster off into the depths of interstellar space, but I did not at any time put anything into orbit. And so this video is to remedy that. So I have a carefully balanced rocket sitting on the pad. It is basically designed to get me out of the atmosphere with about 3.2 kilometers per second delta V. Now what I'm doing is I'm shifting time, accelerating time until I can put the moon roughly where I need it to be based on flying straight up and towards the moon. Now the odds of actually hitting the moon with an unmanned rocket are staggeringly remote, but I think I can exploit it with a bit of uh, practice and trial and error to get, us, get this uh, spacecraft into an orbit around the planet Kerbin. So here we are, you can see it flying upwards, accelerating rapidly and spinning to stabilize. You can also see the extra decouplers and nose cones and ladders, which I have added to fine tune the mass of this vehicle so that the final velocity is low enough or high enough that it gets to the moon, but not so high that it escapes into uh, interplanetary space, which is surprisingly sensitive. Um, 3.2 kilometers per second took a lot of experimentation. And, you know, things would either come back down very quickly or not at all. And the amazing thing about this rocket is it basically burns all its fuel inside the atmosphere very, very quickly. It gets out of fuel very quickly. Uh, and if you watch the accelerometer, it's now climbing towards like 10 G. It's a good thing this is unmanned because we all know that Kerbins are kind of squishy under the right circumstances. 12G, 2.9, 3 kilometers, 3.1, and burnout at 3.18. That is excellent. Now, unfortunately, the patched conic system doesn't show us arriving at the moon. Our, our trajectory seems to be a little low. I think we're going to pass under the moon. But uh, let's follow things through because sometimes the conic system does get things wrong. And I'm pretty sure I've lined this up about as well as I can. Come on. Yes. Oh, yes. There we go. Now, um, that is we're going to pass under the moon and around the back a little. So that's going to kick us up over the top of the planet Kerbin. And hopefully we're going to pass close enough that when we f return to the Kerbin sphere of influence, we will no longer be on a return trajectory. Because as you know, if you go straight up, then you, uh, when you come back, you fall straight back down. There we go, tw 218 kilometers. So this one pass is going to put us into a highly eccentric, but um, somewhat stable Kerbin orbit. It means that we are not going to fall back. Oh. That's interesting. So as we uh, return to the Kerbin sphere of influence, we're going to make, it looks like we're going to make another pass underneath the moon in an orbit's time. That was a uh, rather fortuitous. Well, let's see what happens. See if this um, ruins my orbit or makes it better. Let us uh, switch back and watch the spacecraft fly past because there's nobody on board to take in these wonderful sights. I'm sure there's some automated cameras and stuff that the Kerbin's stuck on there, but given that there's absolutely no electronics or anything on this, I don't know how they can point it. Yeah. So coming back out towards that pass by the moon once again. And enter, we want to not, we want to be careful entering and leaving the Sphere's sphere of influence because that can sometimes really do crazy things. And so it looks like I'm getting into a, a better orbit yet. It looks like, yeah, that's 913 kilometer um, perikey now. And we're going way out. So this is this is going to be a good orbit for a while. Um, the, what will eventually kill it is it will probably, it's going to keep on having encounters with the moon. And it'll either end up crashing into the planet Kerbin or crashing into the moon. Or getting ejected. That's entirely possible. But see, that's the thing in, in a, an end-body system. Every if you if your orbit passes near the the orbit of another one, you will keep encountering it, and any encounter will not change the position of that node significantly. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. I have succeeded in getting a stable orbit for this rocket. Fly safe.
Okay, I know that if I just left that as it was, people would ask what happened to it. Well, after running the simulation for a, at a thousand times for several hours, 481 days later, we uh, have a final encounter with the moon, which brings us back onto our return trajectory seven hours after that. And so, the spacecraft returns after its year and a half in space. You can see it's somewhat damaged. Those uh, ladders have apparently been ripped out of the sides by some uh, force. That would probably be the work of the space kraken, huh? So while it may not have traveled as fast or as far as some of the others, it has traveled far and fast and returned. And for that, the Kerbal space scientists will be fascinated. No doubt they will be sending their navies to recover the wreckage as soon as possible. And they will be certainly curious about what force caused that damage to the ladders strung around the exterior of this ship. But no doubt there will be several volunteers to go and see for themselves.